we're going to go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. Amazing day we're having. I hope it's uh, the sun is shining in the blue skies in your neighborhood like it is in mine today. Uh, my name is Eric McCart, and I am the Vice President and Market Manager with Cumulus Media in Wilmington, along with Cheryl Salamone, who is Market Manager and Vice President of our Fayetteville, North Carolina op uh, operation. I also see we have Cheryl Canders, who is our Local Sales Manager in Fayetteville, as well as I see Josh Richardson, who is going to be good doing our presentation today. We're going to be talking about one of our favorite subjects, which is Google Analytics. So um, be prepared to uh, learn a bunch of really, really fun stuff. We love digital. And uh, Doc, uh, Josh is uh, our digital sales manager for North Carolina. So he works with uh, many, many customers, both in Fayetteville and in Wilmington. Josh has over 25 years of experience as a digital media specialist. So we're, we're very pleased and delighted to have him as part of our team and being able to work closely with our, uh, our customers and helping them with all of their digital uh, marketing and advertising needs. So without further ado, welcome and let's enjoy the show. I'm going to hand it over to Josh. Hey guys, this is Josh Richardson. Uh, thank you guys all for joining us here today. I've met some of you and some of you hopefully I'll be meeting shortly here in the future. Um, if you're on the call and uh, you're listening in, if you could just mute yourself, that'd be great. That way the, the noise doesn't um, affect the presentation. I'd really appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen here. Now, before actually, before we get started, just so you know, Everything that you're gonna see on this presentation today or here if you're calling in by phone um, will be available for you from with your sales executive or your, your account executive. They have this information, they have all these slides. So if you wanna review this information um, or study it a little closer for yourself, you can get in touch with them and they can get that information over to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Can everybody see that? Are we good? Thumbs up? Yep. All right. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about Google Analytics training. So um, thank you for all of you guys that are attending the seminar today. Um, today we're going to talk about some of the basics of Google Analytics and give you enough information to understand what Google Analytics, Analytics are, uh, what they mean, and then some of what they can be used for. The first thing you gotta do before you can start playing with Google Analytics is install it. So if you don't know how to install Google Analytics, these are the directions. You can find them by going to www.google.com slash analytics. Uh, essentially, it's a snippet of code that needs to be placed on every page of the website. This can be done easily by placing it in the header of your site, the head of each page or the header of each page is always seen and is always the first part of the page to come into view and is also part of every page on your website. So by posting it in the header, you can post it once and be done. Um, it's a great way for business owners and advertisers to see what's going on on your site and to get a look at the site from the consumer's point of view and, and their perspective on what's going on on your site. With that said, Google Analytics is in no way, shape or form 100% accurate. In fact, um, it's, there, there's not concrete data. My personal experience would say that Google Analytics is about 80% accurate. It's a tool to govern media choices, but not to rule over them. First thing we'll talk about are some of the metrics. Now, these are, these are some of the common terms um, that you're going to see pretty much on every page of Google Analytics. Uh, so I felt it's important to cover the basics of what you'll see uh, on, on almost every page. So we'll review them real quick. Uh, users measure how many individual devices came to your website, both new and returning during the selected date range. New users measures the number of users that came to a website for the first time during a selected date range. A new user has never been to the website before. So um, if you've been tracking your site with Google Analytics and somebody comes to your site, a piece of code is dropped into their browser history and that person is now tagged as somebody has been to your website and that code usually lasts for what I believe is up to a period of two years. So if they're in the new user's category, 
They have not been to your website within the past two years. Um, sessions are a period of time that someone spends on your website. By default, a session expires after 30 minutes. So if you're on a site, but don't make any activity, take any actions during that 30 minutes, because you had to maybe walk away and help kids with their school, you come back 32 minutes later. Well, if you click on something at that time, it actually shows that you have started a new session. So sessions are by, by definition, 30 minute periods of time. Number of sessions per user is how many times somebody goes to your website. Um, and then page views is the number of pages viewed on your site. Pages per session is pretty self-explanatory. Um, average session duration measures the aggregate of several different metrics. That means someone has more than one interaction with the site, and this is the average of what they did. The biggest one, the one thing I want to talk about the most is the bounce rate. Um, the biggest thing on the page that, that people think of when they look at Google Analytics is their bounce rate because it's been a big topic over the years. And most of the times when I ask a customer or a client what they think bounce rate is, the answer I get back is the number of times somebody came to their website and then immediately left, uh, which is not entirely correct. Yes, that will be counted as a bounce, but the definition of a bounce rate is a single page session on a website. Um, that means that the visitor visited one page on the website and they did not, no other actions during that session. Now, as I mentioned before, a session by default is a 30 minute period of time. So if a person is counted as a bounce, what it means by definition is that they saw one page on the website and their session timed out after 30 minutes. So that can mean a lot of things. Um, there is nothing else reported by bounce rate. Likewise, if there is a plugin like a shopping cart or a form fill that is on your website that's not currently being tracked by Google Analytics, then and somebody decides to fill that form out and it takes them away from the website, that also still will be counted as a bounce. So um, it's one of the most common misconceptions about Google Analytics that having a high bounce rate is bad. And it's not always the case. Um, the other school of thought I want you guys to remember when you're reviewing this and thinking of this whole bounce rate issue is only 2% of the people that come to your website the first time are going to actually follow through to the point of purchase. And you really got to think of why they came to your website. Um, people that come to your website through a display campaign are usually coming there because you captured their attention while they were doing something else. So display campaigns inherently will have a high bounce rate because yeah, they wanted to check you out, but they wanted to get back to the stuff they were doing before and they just tagged you and then maybe they'll come back and see you later. Also a good reason why you should always have um, a retargeting campaign attached to whatever display campaign you provide because we wanna make sure that you are available when they do want to look for you. So the next thing we're going to look at is some of the different screens that you can look at in Google Analytics. Uh, Google Analytics can be kind of like a rabbit hole. So it's very important that once you get here to know what you're looking for so that you can navigate it effectively. Um, here on the home screen, you can set up an overview of information that might be important to you as a business at a glance and an effective way to make sure that you see what you're looking for quickly. So you can set it up with all these different types of screenshots or, or snapshots of information that maybe makes sense to what you're trying to measure or monitor with your business. The next thing that you might take a look at is the audience overview. With the audience overview, um, this is where you'll find an overview of the metrics we discussed earlier. So this is where, oh, I went backwards. There we go. <laughs> um, so things like users, uh, new users, page views, etc. This view will give you a basic view of the overall site. As an advertiser, as a business owner, we're always wanting to make sure we have enough data to, uh, to make sure we have enough data to make educated decisions to identify trends. It's important to look at a date range um, that gives you enough data or users to look at. Technically speaking, if you were to look at a date range that has 100 users, um, 
coming to your website and then if maybe five of them were from a unique situation that could skew your numbers this could give you a false story so you so you always want to make sure that you're looking at enough data when you're trying to identify trends or opportunities my personal requirement would be at least a thousand users um, to get any kind of accurate gauge on trends that might be happening on a website on the bottom of this screen um, you can see the information about the user's identity, like their language, their country, the city they came from, uh, the different types of browsers that they're using, their operating systems, their service providers, device types, et cetera. So this is really a good snapshot of your overall audience that's coming to your website. The next thing I want you guys to start doing, um, if you are in analytics or once you do get into analytics, um, the first thing that you might see when you click on the demographics view, their overview is you might get a page like this. Um, if you do that, all you have to do is click this enable button and um, it'll allow you to be able to see information uh, about the audience that visited your website. It's not retroactive though. So once you click that enable button, it will start tracking the demographics of the audience coming to your website. It will not go back and look at people who have visited your website in the past, it will only report the demographics from that moment forward. But the cool thing about this is once you enable it, uh, you'll be able to get a clear picture of people who visited your website with categories like age, um, gender, and interests. Um, as advertisers, we can use this information to better target or monitor the people who have been, are engaging with you or set up campaigns to target and monitor those that maybe are not engaging with you and based on what we're seeing on these demographic slides. I will tell you, however, this is a snapshot. And again, being that Google Analytics is not the rule, it is um, something to measure. This is a, only capturing 43.77% of the total users. So it's a good gauge, but it is by no means the total picture of all the people that are coming to your website. It's just a good, uh, good way to figure it out and to try to use that information. Um, with interests, now this is where it gets really cool. So here you can see the interest of the people visiting your website outside of what they've done on your site with things like affinity categories, in-market segments, and other categories. Uh, these can give you a snapshot of the things that you might want to align yourself with to better engage with your customers through ad design, social content, and even uh, events and other opportunities. Um, we have uh, an event that we put on called, you know, Pet Fest. So if it shows that your um, people that are visiting your website are fans of pets, and care about pets, it might be a smart idea to align yourself with an event that's tailored to pet owners. Um, and you can find that information here. Another thing you can look at in Google Analytics is the location. Um, Google Analytics does report on the location of the users that visited your website, but this is, is not a very accurate source of data. So most people, when you talk to most people and you show them a slide, they go, well, why am I getting traffic from India and China and Australia or Brazil? Um, uh, or anywhere else that might be on that map that's not necessarily your location. Uh, what I would tell you is that when you are using your home or business Wi-Fi or your hardwire networks, that is going to re be reported as your actual location, but um, this is skewed uh, because when you're using your your data provider so you're using your AT&T your Verizon any of your mobile data providers information or their um, services that's actually going to be tracking from wherever their service uh, their servers are so if they have servers like AT&T's got servers all over the world and your data plan happens to be tapped into a server in India it's going to show that you were in India that day you can actually test this out if you have that on your Google Analytics as uh, what's going on at the current time. You can log in from your computer that's hooked up to your Wi-Fi and see yourself come on there as being in your current location. And then you can go and take your phone 
and you can log into your website from there and see where your servers are for your phone's uh, data service <laughs> and see yourself come in from Australia or I mean I think for um, for AT&T that I'm on right now I think the closest servers are over in Atlanta so if I was to log in from my phone it would show me logging in in Atlanta so it's a great way to um, it, it's not completely accurate however if we use this as a guide, like I said, rather than the rule, like we discussed, we can get a picture of where your core audiences live um, and down to the to the city level. So uh, we can look at it all the way down to the city level and where the majority of your traffic is coming from. Um, and if you do a targeted geographical campaign, you can always use this to see if there is a lift in that area during the campaign. So if you track this as what was going on before the campaign, and then you track what happens throughout the campaign, you can actually tell whether or not there's a lift if in that geographic area if you're targeting it with a campaign. Another screen that you can look at is devices. Uh, on the devices view, um, it's a good thing to track because they give a clear picture of the way people prefer to view your site and what they do when they access it from different devices. Um, if you see that you're that they're viewing your site more from a desktop rather than from a mobile device, you may want to look at what's lacking in your mobile experience. Maybe there's a reason why people aren't used to looking you up on the phone. It'll give you a good indicator that that's an issue. As you can perceive from this example, um, they are spending a lot of time on a desktop and that might not mean um, that they prefer to log in that way. It might mean that they're doing research. Um, in a future course, I'll show you how you can use these device options to track the customer journey to the point of purchase. So uh, from the time they looked at you on their cell phone and then went and researched you on their computer and then did a little more reading about you on their tablet and then went to their phone and made a phone call to get to see you, you can actually track that journey through Google Analytics. One of the biggest things you're gonna be looking at when you're looking at campaigns that you're running on Google Analytics, any kind of advertising campaign is gonna be the view of the acquisition. And in the acquisition overview, um, the, there's six default channels that Google Analytics tracks. And I'll give you a brief explanation of what those are. Organic is uh, refers to traffic <clears throat> coming from a search engine that is a natural unpaid listing that was clicked on. With paid search, it also comes from a search engine that a paid listing was clicked on. Direct uh, refers to people who are directly typing your web address into a search bar on a search engine. Referral is traffic that came to your site from another website, not including social channels. So like if somebody were to put an ad on one of our sites, uh, or we were to do a story about you on one of our radio station websites, and we had embedded a link for people to be able to click on and come to your website, that would be considered a referral. And then um, other is an unidentifiable source by Google um, that sent traffic to your site. And social is labeled for what it is, traffic from a social website source like Facebook or Instagram. So these are the top six things that the acquisition is going to track um, on a regular basis. Once you get, um, some of that traffic being being able to be tracked, you can also tell you what those people did once they got into your website from those different channels and then what their behavior patterns were once they got there as well. Um, the channels report is something that you're gonna see a lot of if you're dealing with somebody in advertising because this is usually where people will bring you to show you what's going on with your different channels of advertising. Um, most of the time, this will be used to track your advertising when you're running campaigns. So the biggest thing to remember when looking at a report like this is that um, this is a stack comparison. It's not just the number of users or time on the site, but the intent that users have when coming to your site from one of these sources listed. Um, social visits, paid visits, uh, organic visits, have different intentions for clicking on your site. Make sure before you compare these that you have a full understanding of this. Somebody that comes to your 
to your website from a social search um, is not got the same mindset or intention as somebody that's coming in through a paid search. Um, and somebody that comes through to you through organic traffic is not usually the same type of person that's going to click on your paid ad. So all of these different things have different variables that make them important. So rather than just looking at this in a stacked view and thinking that organic search is the only thing that you need to do because it's bringing you the most traffic, um, you need to consider those other options and the ways that you're connecting with people when looking at these types of reports. My favorite report and the report that I will always bring my advertisers to when we go in to look at their metrics and see how their campaigns are doing is the source medium report. You can get there by going to acquisition, all traffic, source medium. And when you do get there, if correctly tagged, any paid advertising you were doing online can be grouped together to show you what traffic they're driving to your site and the effectiveness of the other metrics of engagement they are achieving. Um, in this example for, um, since we've got it up here, in this example, you can see that this advertiser's social or Facebook CPC and their Fayetteville NC display um, are driving a large percentage of their traffic. And yes, I'm pointing this out because this traffic is coming from one of our campaigns. <laughs> So if you remember anything about how to look at Google Analytics and look at whether or not the advertising you're doing is being effective, I always want you to remember, go to acquisition, go to all traffic, go to source medium, and make sure you have a date range selected that gives you at least a thousand users or more to make that judgment call with, all right? And uh, that is, that's all for our first lesson of the basics of Google Analytics. For more information on how to use Google Analytics, please come to our next course where we, where we will learn how to track user behavior and set goals for tracking key information and actions on your website. If you'd like for me to take a look at your individual analytics and help you with them, please talk to your account rep and set us up a time to meet one-on-one. -on -one. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. That was an awesome presentation. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Again, I thank everyone for spending a few minutes with us this afternoon. And as Josh said, if you'd like more information, this actual presentation can be available to you. We can send it to you. Just reach out to your account manager or any of your managers, Cheryl Salamone, Cheryl Canders, or myself, Eric McCart. We're happy to help you in any way that we can. And do come back and join us for part two of Google Analytics. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys very much. We Thank appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. It. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Right, Stay safe. Wear a mask.